Where I live, there has been some fairly unusual weather. Weather that some people may say is related to climate change. We've had some really big rain depressions come through and it's delivered enormous amounts of water to the suburb where I live. I've always thought in the back of my mind, what about poor old Mrs. Redback Drain Spider? The spider who is my pet, who lives in the drain down the road. Has she survived these incredible rain events or has Mrs. Drain Spider been flushed out to sea? Let's investigate. Yeah, man, that is just go for it. Yeah, baby. Look at that there. Toil, yeah. Torrents and torrents of water. Uh, going right through there, all flooded through there. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed and this video is highly educational. I was just walking past uh, Redback Drain Spider and I noticed during the day she's popped out. Looks like she's just captured something. There she is. Uh, looks like she's going to take off now because I'm putting a light on her. Not exactly sure what she's got there, but it looks like a tiny little meal for her, but she survived the storms. Oh, hang on a second. There's a male there coming across to the female. Uh-oh. Watch out. That could be very dangerous. And it uh, looks like the male's trying to come in for a feed. My crikeys, uh, that's very unusual. I thought the male was going to do something else there for a second. I was hoping I was going to get something quite spectacular, but uh, not often you see the male and female uh, playing together like this rather nice to see what's the male doing there pretending it's catching something weird what a lovely double act uh, going on there i'm rejoicing in this uh i don't often see it happening like this it's uh, wonderful to see female redback spider i think she'll recluse soon with that that feed that she's just caught and the male is just there very very nice to see lovely couple there's actually other very small immature females working the area as well they're quite sprightly they move around very fast is that one of them up there oh very hard to tell um it's one of these things there's something there out of focus of course oh there it is that's better that looks like an immature female all sorts of spawn crikeys they come out of everywhere all sorts of redbacks uh, up in uh, Mrs. Redback's drain. Amazing. So basically the drain down there is absolutely crawling with redback spiders. Multiple generations. Uh, wonderful to see. Maybe I need to come back here at night when it's a lot quieter. People are looking at me like I'm a goose laying in the gutter. While I'm looking at drain spider across the road is this bin here. This was uh, majorly infested with redback spiders last spider season. Let's see what's going on now. Well, I can see ants tracking through there, and if I run my finger through here, I'll tell you what, I can't feel any spider web, so maybe someone's come along and done a bit of spider control on this very nasty bin. Just coming around to the roadside. Oh, okay. It's telling a little bit of a different story. If I run my finger through here, okay, there's ants there. Uh, there's a spider, a very small redback spider, and I'll go in close on it. Hopefully, you can see it. There's a very young red back there, very difficult to focus on. It's very small, but it's setting up, uh, well, a new family around the bin. When they're this young, they're really hard to spot. I can get my finger in there and tickle it, and I'll probably run away. Oh, crocky, there's something else running out here. I don't think that's a red back, that's something else. Anyway, this is a dodgy edit. I just had an interruption. I had to speak to someone. Uh, the spider has basically reclused back into there, but in reality, this is going to set up as the red back spider's home for next season. Another thing I should point out about this bin is this top piece here and why is it here? Well, it's really designed to stop ibis birds or bin chickens that get into bins like this and they have become very, very popular in Sydney, this style of bin. Unfortunately, uh, in our suburb, they make for the perfect spider home. And of curious note, this surface here is one of the few surfaces that did not suffer hail damage in the massive hailstorm that we had. So nice and thick, a nice curve, no hail damage. And of course, that's the bin there, and there was always a pizza shop behind it, and the pizza shop is as clean as a whistle. No redback spiders to be seen. So this bin here, as long as it keeps attracting redback spiders, they're going to breed, they're going to send spiders out to other parts of the suburb, in particular the pizza shop. And really, wouldn't it be nice if this bin was just totally taken away? 
That was fantastic to see. Drain Spider still kicking on. We've had two, should do like that, uh, major rain depressions come through the part of town where I live in the last four weeks. Uh, one was directly after the big hailstorm that we had. Let's be reminded of how much it rained. Just looking at the edge of the storm that you get, a bit of an idea of the speed it's moving and we're getting that wind. Uh, but when I swing around here, it's like the darkness that you don't want to have happen is coming straight for us. It's bad! The wind's starting to pick up, but anyone who had damage from that first uh, storm is only going to get heaps more damage from this one. I just got that feel about it. Here it comes! Here it comes! It is just pelting down and it's coming in in waves. It's extremely cold and it is extremely dark. Oh man, there are people still trying to drive in this. I don't know why. I can see some of them with hazard lights on. They're idiots. Get off the road. Get into some shelter. You're going to die on the road. You're going to die. It is just so much water falling. Um, hopefully there's no hail in this. It is just one of those like completely crazy rain events. Okay, very windy. But it's very cold, the, the water is very cold. Uh, I'd hate to think of the, uh, the bill, the damage bill from this is just going up and up and up and up from the storms. This rainstorm happened an hour after the hailstorm from hell, as I call it. That was the 20th of December 2018. So anybody's roof that was opened up by the big hail now had all this rain coming into the house, taking down the ceilings, taking out the electricals and causing havoc. There was a massive damage bill from this storm. Both cars, houses, so much stuff written off, unbelievable. Foolishly, I walked around after the hailstorm because, well, that's the way I'm wired. I'm interested in things that go wrong. And what I should have been doing was taking a look at my mobile phone because I could see some people were frantically trying to fix their roofs. And I kept thinking, why are people so busy and so frantic about fixing their roof? Is there something they know that I don't know? Well, of course, they must have known this massive rain depression was on its way. Put it this way, looking at the radar, it was certainly showing that there was something really bad coming in. And sure enough, it came. And when we had that rain depression, I thought, I wonder if Drain Spider survived that. Well, obviously, Drain Spider has survived that. And also, well, the whole family has as well. Environmental impacts on these spiders, um, I've always thought that's one of the big... Uh, things that pulls down their numbers, but then again now that the fact that drain spider can survive major rain events Maybe it has very little impact on them at all. I dare say the spider experts will tell me more Ah, uh, Yes, spider experts. Thank goodness for them Occasionally I get a very nice spider expert come across my content and I will put my hand up and I will say I am NOT a spider expert I am NOT an entomologist but I have learnt lots of things about redback spiders, well, simply because I've looked at them and put a camera over them for a number of years, and strangely enough, I feel quite fond of them these days. In the video where I showed the last remaining redback spider after 16 weeks of being in a very dynamic redback spider tank, I asked the audience a very simple question. Sadly, only a few people seemed to want to answer that question, and that has me worried. But I took notice of one person who made a comment, and it was a channel called Winton Knight. Please remember this channel name. Very important to remember this one. That person there named this redback spider Bindi. And it's funny, when I saw that name pop up, that's a fantastic name, because the first thing I thought of is the wonderful person called Bindi Irwin, who is Steve Irwin's daughter. And then luckily for me, I was inquisitive about the person who named the spider Bindi, so I clicked on this channel and my crikey Charlies. It is an incredible channel. This young boy has got a very big future. He comes across excellent on camera. He doesn't mince his words and he does his own style. He's not there copying other people. And let me rant here for a bit. When I see copycat channels and people just mimicking and copying other channels on YouTube, I turn right off and I say nothing about these styles of people. I am sick to death of seeing copycat producers on this site, but Winton Knight is doing it his way and it's different and it's good. I really liked what I saw in his channel. And what I do when I take a look at someone's channel and I start to get inquisitive, I take a look at the first video they put up onto YouTube. I also look at their most popular video they put up onto YouTube. And then I look at things that maybe is similar to what I'm doing. So I looked at some of his Redback Spider videos. Winton Knight has an excellent YouTube channel, but I'm really fearful 
that he's against the YouTube system that seems to be hiding away these wonderful producers. And what is a little bit scary is there are a number of critter channels where people were showing bugs and whatnot doing stuff and some of those have just disappeared. I can only assume the YouTube system has decided, well, we've had enough of this style of content. Away with you. You're off the site. And in a very telling way of today's YouTube and how twisted it is towards the certain end of the site is when I looked at Winter Nights videos and I looked at a number of them, the videos that were being suggested to me was Brave Wilderness and Monster Bug Wars. Well, hang on a second. Why aren't I being suggested more of Winter Nights content? That's the problem with the system because the smaller producers just get buried by those bigger producers. And that's wrong. Totally wrong. They've got to let the little producers get some air. It is just too bent towards those monster producers that seem to just crush everything. And I'm sorry for ranting and raising my voice, but I know if Winton had his channel on this site, let's say seven years ago, he would have been in a totally different environment. He would have been on a site which is much fairer, and he would have had a really, really great rise to the top, because unfortunately I feel that the system is bent against him. And let's say if I see that this channel falters and fails, well, it's proof that YouTube is really losing the plot in what's very important when it comes to fresh people making some good media. Now what Winton Knight needs to do is not connect to an old burnt out YouTuber like me because Google are doing their best to get rid of my channel. Winton needs to connect to Coyote at Brave Wilderness and somehow be mentioned on those videos and have multiple links via Coyote so he becomes mega famous. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Because what I've seen on this site for many, many years is those who are above other YouTubers will ignore those who are below. It seems to be the way the place works. I spoke to Winton via a couple of comments on his channel so everybody can see the way I was speaking to him. I speak openly and honest to him. I don't hide any facts. I rarely ever do shoutouts like this in the many years that I've been on this site. And I've been done over by a few people in the past who come along and they want to partner up to your channel and, you know, do a collab. And in the end, they offer the world, but they deliver nothing. I call them the all suck and no blow styles of people. Sadly, I've come across too many of those in the last 12 years. Winton, I wish you the best of luck and my crikeys, you're going to need it because today's YouTube is nothing like the YouTube I started on many years back. And really, the big changes have happened in, let's say, the last four years, five years, and in particular when the advertiser backlash happened and it seemed to have sapped the money from the site. Why didn't YouTube slash Google pull out those top-tier YouTubers who were playing games and making inappropriate content? How come the whole site got punished for the crimes of just a few? That's the part I don't understand. All I know is that I'm also part of the problem because of the way YouTube treated my videos after being age-restricted and flagged. If I got them back, well, they were just re-age-restricted and re-flagged. I just hope your channel is not viewed and treated as poorly as my channel has been in the last couple of years. Maybe the only good sign and hope we've got for the future is, when I take a look at the 2018 YouTube Rewind video, YouTube have achieved the miraculous goal of creating the most disliked video on the site. And I'm sure YouTube are thinking, how did this happen? How can we fix this problem? I know how they're going to fix the problem. You know how they're going to fix the problem. They're going to ignore it. And that's the problem.